So uh, for the new audience, probably I will spend one minute to, to give you the background of this live series. So we have uh, currently developed and we are developing this PyHealth package. And every week we are going to um, have this Wednesday night session of live to introduce the basic modules in this package. And uh, in the next few weeks, after we finish the basic module introduction, we are going to cover use cases one by one specifically over each week, over each week. and then we, we use uh, Jupyter Notebook as a live demo. So um, if you would like to read or watch our previous live record, uh, please subscribe to our channel, and uh, AI for Health. And then if you wanted to learn more about PyHealth, just search PyHealth in Google and you will find our front page. So this week is, uh, so PyHealth is a package developed uh, for medical practitioners and machine learning researchers uh, to develop their um, healthcare predictive tasks. This week, we were going to cover the basic data structures in PyHealth and tell you, teach you how to use our package to transform the unstructured data to a structured and unified way so that you can use our later on modules to process them um, in, the, in the same way. Uh, so I am Chao Chi Yang. I'm a PhD student in UIUC. And uh, currently, this package is uh, collaborated with Zhen Bang Wu and Patrick Jiang, who is also in the call. And our mentor is Professor Jim Song. Um, so uh, the first, this slide shows our current data structures that are used in the current model. So user will input a unstructured data set, and we will go into right now, uh, most of the data set on um, processed in PyHealth are electronic health record data set. And we will process this different data set into the unified structured uh, formats like this. this. The processed data set will have different levels, the patient level, visit level, and event level. So in the first level, uh, we will store the data set as a dictionary and then giving a user key, you will retrieve the patient object. And this patient object contains different patient level information, such as the gender, the birth time, and the ethnicity, et cetera. And this patient level object itself is an object that is a dictionary. If you give us the hospital visit ID, it can retrieve different visit level object. So one visit level object itself, similarly, it contains different visit level information, such as visit encounter time and the locations, the visit status, etc. And for each visit level object itself contains different multiple sequences of different clinical um, events, such as diagnosis events, lab test events, and procedure events. We clean them in a uh, following the time order and each clinical kind of category will, have, will be a kind of sequence following the time order. And each circles here, colored circles here, they are actually the clinical events contains the det detailed information in that clinical events. So I'm going to uh, right now stop sharing and then show you some real example. Uh, I will open the Google and then type PyHealth. That's the, if you want to use our package, that probably is the same way to get started with each of the uh, modules. So let's first look at the PyHealth data. And uh, to use our package, the first step is to install PyHealth. So as I mentioned before, these modules is basically um, tell you what the internal data structure that we are using. So this module basically contains three structure, event structure, visit, and the patient. And just refer to these figures. So the event structure stores, event structure maps to these circles basically on this figure, and it can contain the code, the tables, the vocabulary of the event, like uh, it's a diagnosis, it's ICD code or a NDC code, a drug. And uh, it also contains visit ID, patient ID, timestamp, and other attributes. It's better to show an example. So here is an example. If you want to create a event, like store or different clinical informations, you can just use our, uh, this event is really a kind of a collection of information related to that event. You store the code, the table, 
uh, vocabulary and etc. So this is basically an event. If you print it, we have stored all the information for you. And uh, that's pretty clear. If you wanted to create another event, that's basically it. And you can add other attributes um, for the downstream task if you wanted to use that attribute, such as act active on discharge is true or false. And then you can use dot attribute dictionary to retrieve that attribute. So that's basically very easy. That's the event uh, structure. You can use structure to store all information that you need is related to that event. Then uh, a level higher, which is a visit structure. It's similar, it stores the visit ID, patient ID, and other bunch of visit level information. So again, it has an entry uh, dictionary uh, type um, argument that allows you to store whatever other key value pairs that you want uh, in this structure. And it has other attribute and method. I will show you use the example. So you can create a visit. This visit corresponding to this hospital visit ID and correspond to this patient. And you specify the encounter, discharge time, and other um, key value pair. So you can add the event that you just created before to this visit if they are they have the same visit ID and the patient ID. Otherwise, we will raise an arrow for you saying that the event and the visit, they are, this event won't contain that event. This visit won't contain that event. So after you're adding these two events to the visit, you can print the visit and see that, okay, this event object really contains its visit level information and the two events we just created. It's, uh, it's very simple. You can also use our attribute to see the at use our functions to see the like functionalities uh, within this uh, this um, structure. And uh, as I mentioned before, this visit object contains different um, clinical event sequences. You can get the diagnosis sequence by using this get event list. Just tell us what clinical event you want to retrieve. And it happens that in this event, we only have one in this visit, we only have one event corresponding to the diagnosis, and then it returns one. You can also only get the code of the visit using get code list. And uh, let's create another event and another visit and add this event to that visit and print the visit. Uh, this visit contain only contains one event. That's That means currently we have created two visits and three events. And the first visit uh, contains two events, and the, the second visit contains um, one event. And uh, so one level higher for the patient object, it's the same. Uh, you can store the patient level information here and other attribute here. And there are different, more kind of methods for you to retrieve the information because the patient object is more complicated. And again, I will show the example. You can specify patient, the birth time, the death time, the gender, ethnicity, and add the event and the visit we just created to this patient. So because the event already is already added to the visit, so it, they are automatically attached to this patient. So if you print this patient, you will see this patient has two visits and the first visit has two events. And basically all the information are stored in this structure. And uh, yeah, that's, and if you like say, saying here are two example, if you want to retrieve the visit from the patient, you just get visit by index. You get the second visit because uh, the index start from zero. And after you get the visit, you can also use visit level method to get uh, some detailed other information. So that's basically the structure. It, 